Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to the 30 Days of Preparedness Collaboration. This year it's hosted by Rogue Preparedness. Thank you very much Morgan for inviting me to participate. I love this collab. It is one of my favorites. It is 30 Days of Preparedness because September is National Preparedness Month. This is time that we should all sit down, take stock of where we are in our preparedness journey and what we can do to be better prepared in the future. So there is a video every single day in the month of September bringing different preparedness topics to you so that hopefully you can become better prepared for your SHTF situation. Now, to start that off, an SHTF situation is different from, for everybody, okay? It could be a job loss. It could be medical. It could be financial. It could be an EMP. It could be whatever, right? But whatever is the most likely. It could be a hurricane yeah, forest fire, you name it. There are all kinds of SHTF situations out there. And what you should be preparing for are the ones that are most likely to happen to you in your area. I am not going to prepare the same as somebody in Arizona. Somebody in Arizona is not going to prepare the same as somebody in North Carolina. You got the drift, right? So we're going to hit some real, you know, top level stuff here. But then you drill it down to where you are in your preparedness game. Most of you that have been with me know that I'm all about pantry preparedness. To me, that is the best insurance in the world. It is money in the bank because nothing in my pantry will ever devalue. It will always hold its value and it will sustain me and mine for as long as I need it to. As long as I need it to. As long as I keep working my game, right? Because if you use it, you need to prep it, period. And that's, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. That is the theme of this entire video. So as far as the pantry grows, it goes, if you use it, prep it, that falls 100% in with the food. If you don't use Chinese five, five, five Chinese spice or whatever it's called, don't, don't stock it. Obviously, as you can tell, I don't stock it. Okay. Um, if you use what's your face sauce, then stock it. Worcestershire sauce. Okay. What's your face sauce. But what I did is I found an easier way to stock more by buying it in powdered form. So now I don't have to take up all that room with all those extra bottles. I have the What's Your Face powder and I can add it whenever I want. I did the same thing with soy sauce powder. I did the same thing with heavy whipping cream powder. I did the same thing with tomato powder. Instead of stocking up a whole bunch of different kinds of tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, tomato juice, now I have tomato powder that I can make any of those things with I have just brought three items down into one. Less space means I have more room to be able to prepare and to stock up use prepping what I use, okay? So, this is going to be a tongue twister today, my friends. So, in your pantry, sit down and take a look. And take a look at ways that you can do things a little bit different. Instead of uh, regular all-purpose flour that you get from the store... I have now converted over to wheat berries where I grind my own flour because the wheat berries have an infinite shelf life, 30 years plus, right? Whereas commercially ground bleached flour has a finite shelf life. It will go bad after a year and plus. So I've had a few people tell me they make it to a year and a half to two. I don't know, but... For sure, what I've read, it lasts about a year or so, and then it starts to go rancid. How do you know it goes rancid? Because you'll know when it goes rancid. But I'm trying to find more and more ways to stretch what I'm stocking in my pantry in a different manner so that it takes up less space, I have a better quality product, and it lasts as long as possible. Because getting 30 years out of anything that I put into that pantry is my end goal. I want to make sure that we're never out of anything that we use because if we use it, we should prep it. If you use it, you should prep it. The next thing is medical. Now that one's a little trickier to do, but if you use it, prep it. You don't have to prep 30 years worth of stuff in order to make this happen. You can prep a year or two ahead of time. Now is cold and flu season, pretty much wherever you are. So now's the time to stock up on those over-the-counter medications. Don't go empty in the shelves. Get what you and your family normally go through in a year, okay? If you go through a bottle of NyQuil a year, pick up a bottle of NyQuil. If you go through, um, what am I thinking of? Um, Metamucil. Metamucil? Yeah. Then, you know, get one of those. 
have something for diarrhea, have something for Pepto-Bismol, have something for any number of things that you can, you know, cure anything that comes up in the middle of the night instead of getting into a car and driving in inclement weather to find an open drugstore to pick up what you need. Having a bottle of any of those things or a box of any of those things in your medical supplies is super important and will make everybody a lot more comfortable if illness hits your house. It is no fun trying to go out and find what you need when you are sick and then you're just spreading it around more. So don't do that. Hygiene items, right? Now, this is everything in my mind from shampoo and soap and conditioner to alcohol, uh, you know, isopropyl alcohol, peroxide, um, and the other one that was just in my head, bandages, um, feminine products, right? Uh, there, there's all kinds of different hygiene items, laundry soap, cleaners, cleansers. There's all kinds of things that fall under that particular category. If you use it, prep it. Now, I know how much laundry soap we go through in about a year. And so I stocked up three years with of laundry soap. I know how many dishwasher tabs we go through in about a year. So I stocked up three years worth of dishwasher tabs. I even did this with trash bags because, hey, if SHTF really occurs, you're going to need trash bags, my friends. You really, really are, okay? So you go through, and if, if you use it, prep it. If you don't use it, if it's a one-off that you don't think you know, you're really ever going to use again, don't get it. But if it's something that you know you're going to use, that's the time to stock up on it. That's the time to get it. Solo cups have saved my butt more times than I want to tell you because they're in the pantry because we do use them on occasion. And so it's convenient to have them around in case of an emergency, right? Now let's talk about fuel for a hot minute because this is going to be dependent a lot on where you are and what's going on. And we all know our friends in the UK right now are going through some rough times and it's predicted to get much rougher and most likely here too. Honestly, the prices are starting to creep back up again um, as far as fuel costs go. So you want to make sure that you've got some backup fuel in your gas cans. Gas cans do you no good at all if they are empty. So make sure your gas cans are filled. Make sure if you fill them that it is with the knowledge that you're going to use it within the next six months or so, okay? However, propane, anything that you have that's propane, that propane lasts a good long time. That is why we opted for the dual fuel generator because I wanted propane, Phil wanted gas. We compromised, we got dual fuel, we're using propane on it. We have a whole bunch of propane tanks, you know, just the, the 20 pound ones that you get for your grill which, by the way, are super easy to find used. I have got a friend, bless her heart, sure, who her and her husband go to the dump and they get them free out of the dump. Um, we find them free on the side of the road all the time. People selling their barbecue grills on Marketplace and, hey, yeah, go ahead, take the propane tank. I don't want it. Well, okay, you just saved me a hunk of money, right? So now we've got a nice stash of propane tanks. We make sure that they're all full because propane is something that we use a lot of around here. We use it for cooking, we use it for our machinery, like our snowblower, our lawn, you know, not lawnmower, our snow, yeah, gasoline is for our snowblower, our lawnmowers, um, you know, that kind of thing. The propane is good for other things that we use around here, torches, heaters, you name it. So if you use it, prep it, very, very important. Another thing that I don't want to leave out because you know they're near and dear to all of our hearts is our pets. If you use it, prep it. We are working to make sure that we have six months worth of dog food and six months worth of cat food. We cannot store that much chicken food because these guys are pigs, literally. But, um, you know, to make sure that we have enough just in case of an emergency so that we have food for them. If you use it, prep it. Take that into consideration with your pets, your pet's medication, your livestock medication, your livestock feed. If you can, prep it. Now, we have nothing that eats hay other than the chickens. Well, the pigs do too, but they're not getting any. But we intentionally went and got a bunch of bales of hay for the barn because I can put it down in the chicken run. It is something that they'll eat. It is something that will occupy them and it'll be put to good use and they'll compost it for me and it'll be some of the best dirt in the world for the garden next year. But it's because we use it that we prep it. Now is the time that you want to make sure that you have everything that you need in case of an emergency like that. 
Get yourself some bungee cords. Get yourself a good tarp. Everybody. I can't think of a single person that doesn't need a good tarp. Get yourself some zip ties. You don't need to buy them by the thousands like we do. Don't ask. I won't tell. Okay. But they're a good thing to have on hand. They can be used for a multitude of reasons. They are, they are the duct tape. Okay. You know, get yourself some duct tape. Who couldn't use duct tape? If you know anything about your plumbing, if you know anything about how your house operates, get your air filters, get that kind of thing. If you use it, prep it. This literally encompasses every aspect of your household, of your life. Have extra blankets, have extra sheets, have extra uh, everything, okay? But not to the point where you are needing a whole second house, just a backup to your main. You want to make sure you've got a few extra blankets in case, say, all of a sudden you've got emergency company over. Everybody needs blankets. Do you have some blankets? Okay, are you willing to share your blankets with some folks? Um, extra sheets because medical things happen and medical things happen to sheets, right? Backup sheets, they're a really good thing to have. Do I have to say it? Toilet paper, my friends, toilet paper. Make sure you've got toilet paper. If you use it, prep it. It is so important. And it doesn't have to be done at top of the line either, okay? It doesn't have to be. You can do this piece by piece Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, wherever it is that you go, and just pick up a little something extra every pay period, okay, so that as you're working along, you have what you need to become better prepared. And it's a constant, this is not a one and done. This is not a one and done. This is something that you keep working on. It's a lifestyle because once you realize that you've got that extra, now you're like, you know what, I might need an extra one of those again. I might need another one of those. And, oh, wow, that came in handy. So, you know what? We should probably get two more of those. If you use it, prep it. To the degree that you prep it is going to be up to you at your discretion, your space limitations, your climate limitations, right? But if you use it, prep it because you will end up needing it. It's just like with your pantry. If you eat it, store it. If you store it, eat it. Don't just put it in your pantry because somebody else said that that's what should be there. Put it in your pantry, put it in your house, put it in your preps because it's something that you are actually going to use. Otherwise, you might as well just take that dollar bill and light it on fire because you'll get more use out of it that way. I hope that this helps somebody somewhere and that I wasn't too cattywampus over this. Thank you again, Morgan, for inviting me to be part of the 30 Days of Preparedness Collaboration. Check out the link down below for the playlist. And until next time, everybody, please be safe.